up, we have Kritika Singh. And Kritika, if you're coming in, just come right in the front row. <laughs> Good. Kritika is a malaria researcher and a junior here at TJ. She founded Malaria Free World, which is a 501c3 nonprofit organization to raise awareness in malaria research. And their goal is to get more youth involved in the fight against malaria. She's organized many educational events and launched several programs to get people excited about this. And she's also actively studying socioeconomic, medical, and cultural challenges needed to be understood to outsmart the malaria mosquito and parasite and to help the world get rid of this deadliest disease in its history. And one question remains, why hasn't malaria been eradicated yet? If you guys can welcome Kritika Singh. So, flashback to three or four weeks ago. I'm walking the halls, the marble halls of the Capitol Hill building towards a World Malaria Day event, an exclusive World Malaria Day event only for the NGOs involved in the fight against malaria. I walk into the room, I see lots of pictures. Pictures of families who are dealing with malaria in different regions of the world, such as Africa, such as India, such as parts of South America. The pictures have captions on them about what these families are going through. Families such as these. Now I'm asking you to look at this picture. What do you see in the eyes of the parents? Do you see hopes for the future? Do you see dreams of happiness for their children? Do you see the hope that one day their children will become something successful? No. What I see, I see in the eyes of these parents, these children, the fear of every day that they might succumb to the disease that we call malaria. They might, the fear that they might succumb and they won't be able to take care of their children who will, be left an or, who, be, who will be left orphans. The fear that if they get malaria, they will lose their jobs. The fear that they might lose their children. The fear of lost potential. And who do we blame for this fear? Our oldest enemies, the mosquito. Malaria is a parasitic infection that is caused by the plasmodium parasite but spread by mosquitoes which results, the mosquitoes result in 700, 2,500,000 deaths per year of humans. Like, let's put that number into perspective a little bit. One little mosquito can cause that many deaths per year. One of the most important ways that we can defeat the mosquito, defeat malaria, is by understanding the complex mechanism in which it is transmitted. In order to do this, we need to understand that it's, it's very hard to defeat the four stages, the four stages of transmission of the malaria parasite. Can we defeat it when the mosquito bites the human? Can we defeat it when the parasite travels to the human liver? Can we defeat it when then the parasite uh, reproduces and then travels to the blood, red blood cells? How about can we stop another mosquito from biting the human and then getting the parasite? What about stopping it when it's, in the par when it's in the life cycle and in the life cycle of the mosquito? We can stop it at any one of these stages. So why haven't we stopped malaria yet? It's been around since the dawn of humankind. We've known about malaria as malaria for over 4,000 years. So what's stopping us? But more importantly, what have we done so far to defeat this disease? So in the 1900s, we can look at this map here. The red represents where malaria was present, almost the entire world, besides those regions where mosquitoes can't flourish because of high altitudes. We see a little bit of improvement by 1945. Wow. What happened during the 1970s? How did we see almost the entire Western world get rid of malaria? What happened? Let me tell you, the United States got involved. The United States led a huge campaign to rid the world of malaria and eliminate it from the United States because of the soldiers coming back from World War II. We see that in the 1970s, huge change happened because the United States was motivated enough to lead the cause. We see 1990s, even more regions of the world are now free of malaria. This is one of, these are one of the most recent statistics. In 2009, 
We see the green areas where malaria elimination programs are in place. But yet, we still see places of red. Why is this? We know exactly how to defeat this disease. We have done it. Look at the world where it's clear. We've done it in so many places. Why can't we do it in these areas? Why? An answer lies in the relationship between malaria and poverty. If we look at the map of the places where malaria is most present today, we see those are the regions of the world that are most impoverished. So what causes this relationship between malaria and poverty that's one of the major obstacles in us fighting this disease? Poverty causes malaria. People who don't have enough money aren't able to afford the high-priced medications and so resort to buying counterfeit drugs, which they don't know, of course, are counterfeit, but they cost less money. And they give those to their children, they result in the spread of even more malaria. Malaria causes poverty. This is because when people are sick with malaria, when their children are sick with malaria, they stay home, therefore not going to their jobs, and losing productive time, and time and money for their countries and the economies. Due to these impoverished conditions and the lack of a sustainable, standardized system for medication and the distribution of treatments, we see the malaria parasite developing resistance to almost any medication we throw at it. We see it growing resistance to any drug. Vaccine treatments are now present and they're also getting resistance. And as recent as a couple of weeks ago, the current lead treatment in malaria eradication programs has now developed resistance in the same place that previous drug resistance developed as well. So what can we do? What can we do to solve this? We are already behind the malaria parasite. We already see that this is where we are today. We are behind a parasite. Humankind is behind a parasite in fighting this disease. We know how to solve it, yet we are still behind. This is not justifiable. In order for us, as humankind, as scientists, as researchers, as collaborators, we need to realize that we need to take important steps on the road towards a malaria-free world. We need you communicators to advocate for malaria elimination programs. We need you to go into countries afflicted with malaria and tell them, look, we are giving you medicines, please use them. We're giving you bed nets, please do not use them as just distributors of fishing nets. Please use them for what they're supposed to be used for. We need you scientists, engineers, mathematicians to work together to continue to solve the problem that is malaria through drug treatments, through economically and effectively analyzing the situation to see where drug treatment should be given and which types of drugs should be given to each region. We need you international relations aficionados and businessmen to work with governments to establish policies, international and global health policies, that will prevent the distribution of counterfeit drugs, that will also establish policies when we give countries money for malaria prevention, that they go towards the malaria prevention and not towards the pockets of corrupt government officials. And finally, we need organizations and collaborations in countries that have already rid themselves of malaria to continue in the fight towards it and not just stop because we don't have that problem anymore. We need people in the United States, in countries in Europe, to continue with the fight, to continue funding this, to continue working on programs, to continue making medications in order to effectively solve this disease. But most importantly, we need change. We need a change in the way we are tackling this disease. We've seen that we have tackled it for over 100 years now as a focused problem, but we still need some change. As a TJ kid, I saw this need for change. I saw a need for a new and innovative solution to the problem that is malaria. And in addition to my research developing a drug for malaria over the summer and during the school year, I founded Malaria Free World, an organization that aims to raise awareness about malaria research and raise funds for malaria eradication efforts, along with aspiring, inspiring young scientists to pursue diseases such as malaria, such as the other neglected tropical diseases of the world, because they're not exposed to that, and if they're not exposed to it, the next generation won't get involved, and this problem will still persist. 
We have already formed collaborations with members of the government, with organizations such as Nothing But Nets, Malaria No More, the Defeating Malaria Initiative. We have formed collaborations with venture capitalists who fund our efforts, with academic, academic organizations that work with malaria research so we know on the ground what is happening with our money. We have formed collaborations within our own community with local schools who help us talk to the children, talk to them about how they can make an instrumental difference in the fight against malaria. And most importantly, we have formed collaborations in our own community, in our own TJ community. And this, I think, is one of the major reasons where, when I think that we can solve the problem of malaria. I truly believe that together, with global co collaborations, with the help and support of everyone in the audience, everyone listening out there, I think that together with our collaborations, we can end malaria worldwide, and that this will be the generation during which we defeat malaria. Thank you.